Hello, welcome today. This is a, a great little video um, just basically demonstrating how to do a, a reroute treatment. So um, I've noticed on a lot of my metrics that a lot of people are looking for reroute treatments and how to do it. So this is a reroute treatment on an upper central. And here what I'm doing is I'm just removing the uh, the filling material just to open up to see where the, the, the GP is. And when we when we look at the GP, it looks like it's nice, well compacted, and also quite fresh, which I feel like sometimes is a, is a, is a, is a, is a pretty good sign for sort of prognosis in, in the future. So essentially, what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to open up the sort of coronal portion of the GP, and I'm very very slowly picking away here at. Um, the, the GP with some H files. So um, years and years and years ago, I used to use um, uh, rotary files to, to remove the GP, but in this case now, I, I'm just simply using H files. Um, the, the problem with using rotary files is they can, um, they can sort of uh, destroy the, the GP. You can't remove the whole GP in, in one, and that's what you wanna do. You don't wanna break it up into little pieces. So I'm just very, very, very slowly picking away at the coronal portion of the GP here with a DG16 endodontic probe. Lots of picking with H files. And now I've sort of breached the coronal por portion of the tooth. And I am, again, just very, very slowly picking away. What I've noticed here is the palatal aspect of this tooth. There is kind of like a bit of a ledge and you'll notice um, when doing root treatments that it's sometimes great to have straight line access so this kind of sort of palatal ledge here is is kind of getting in the way for that kind of removal of 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 the gp and there's the first big piece that we've removed here i think in this case i'm not going to be removing you know super large pieces so a lot of the time what happens is the GP gets stuck against the wall of the um, of, of the tooth. So what I'll do is I'll use a couple of H files to sort of pick away at it. And then once I've sort of breached it, I'll, I'll try and use a DG um, endodontic probe to try and push the GP into the center so I can screw a H file in and then, and then pull it out. So this is what I'm trying to sort of do here. So you can see I'm trying to undermine the sort of um, the, 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 the GP where it where it sort of it's adhered to the wall so to speak and I'm using you know different sized um, H files 25 to 20s every now and I'm going to use a 15 just got, got to be careful with the 15 because it's, it's quite small and obviously the screwing action of the H file can can cause it to fracture although I'm yet to have a fracture with a H file with, with, with the removal of GP and, and sometimes, you know, it, it just, just takes time and patience, just time and patience, just to very gently pick away at the, uh, at the GP. So again, I feel like I'm having a slight issue with uh, straight line access, uh, access here. So the, 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 the GP is, is adhered to sort of the palatal aspect of uh, the canal wall here. So I am doing my best to um, remove it, but, I, but I just feel like I, I can't get the straight line access. So unusually in this case, what I've done is I've removed um, sort of the buckle aspect of the of, of the the prep there. It's given me a bit more uh, straight line access, so I can pull the GP out more. Lots of irrigation as well, because you'd be surprised how much GP uh, is is removed with with uh, with with irrigation. More straight line access here. He, here I'm using a ultrasonic. Um, uh, tip just to remove that palatal shelf and again more headstrong files just to try and undermine that um, that, that GP screw it in pulling out I always make sure I'm, uh, I make the patient aware that we're, we're, we're doing a lot of pulling and tugging with with um, with this GP removal and probably the most satisfying thing in the whole of dentistry is when you screw in the head strum file and you pull it out and the whole piece of the GP comes with it. That's a very, very satisfying uh, uh, thing. So lot, just, just, just very, very patient, lots of irrigation, lots of head strum files. I'm also using a GP remover. I can never pronounce his name, so I'll just 
flash it up on the screen now what I'm using. And it's 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 like a, a DG endodontic probe, but on the end is like a tiny little hook, and it can be used to just flick out a little bit of GP. So so there's a tiny 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 little bit of GP down there, and it'll be really really tough for me to use um, a headstrong file to pick that out. But here you can see it's just got a tiny little hook on it. It's just removing those last little fragments. I um, I'm not sure what I did before this uh, this instrument. This instrument is amazing, although it is very very expensive. It's about 150 pounds if you live in the UK, and um, and the little uh, sort of hook on the end can get blunt very very quickly. So you just got to be careful you don't scrape it up against the walls too much. But it's a very very good instrument, and I highly recommend it to anybody. And what I'll do is I'll put a link in, in below where to buy it from. I believe you buy it from Toothsaver, and that, that's UK and, and the US, I believe, as well. So here, um, I believe there's a tiny, tiny little bit of GP left. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of wicking out the, um, the moisture from the irrigant we've used just so I can visualize GP a little bit more. Um, and, I, and you can kind of see the tiny, tiny little bit left there. So that's going to be really, really tough. And um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to remove it with the HH files, but I'm also using irrigation and uh, active irrigation as well. So what you'll see is that you'll activate the irrigant with ultrasonics, and then that little piece will just remove by itself. So all the GP is removed, and now I'm just going to do a working length check. Um, I'm just using very, very gentle watch winding um, uh, mo motions here with a, with a size 10K file and um, you'll notice that I do get to length here. I am using a uh, Wilex um, uh, wireless apex locator and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I really like it. Um, again, I'll leave a link in below for it. I suppose the only issue with it is, is the battery's terrible, but it, it really, really, really works really, really well. And I believe it's made by the same people who do the Root ZX Apex Locator. For me, it just works really well because it's just, I've got so much stuff, I can kind of just put the Apex Locator to the side and and, it, and, and there's no big long wires that kind of get in the way. Um, so, so to me, in my workflow, it works pretty, pretty well. So now I'm to length now, I'm just very, very gently opening up the uh, the sort of coronal, uh, sorry, the apical third of the uh, of the tooth, ready for my um, my uh, mass apical file. And and in this case, for some reason, and I do this a lot, is I have. Um, forgotten to take uh, a video of my final shaping which which I suppose in this case isn't, isn't really a lot because um, in this case uh, most of the canal wall has been shaped already so um, really what I'm doing is that all I'm doing is is shaping the the very very final apical third of the tooth so um, with that in mind that's been done and now we're going for the cone fit radiograph and this is essentially a matched cone high flex 25 and you know it's to length and it looks looks pretty sweet so we're going to pull that out and i'm going to put that in some hypochlorite to make sure that that's um, disinfected and then my final irrigation protocol is uh two percent or three percent sodium hypochlorite and then i ultrasonically activate uh the tooth there is a um, an argument to say with uh, some reroute treatments that you need over two appointments. In this case, I felt like the GP was nice and clean. There's no obvious area, and the patient just preferred to be, uh, you know, done in, in one treatment. So I'm happy just to do it in one in one appointment. Again, you'll see when you activate it, all of the kind of uh, detritus in the in the irrigant sort of comes out, and you notice that it, you know, it looks really really nice and clean more activation lots of irrigant lots of activation i like to activate quite a lot actually and then uh, we're just going to use some some paper points just to dry the canal because of course if the canal isn't dry um obviously the uh, that affects the uh, the sealer the endodontic sealer that you're going to use um i like to put the paper point in inspect it see if it's dry it's not in this case so i'm going to put another paper point in and have a little look and yeah, I'm, I'm happy that that's nice and dry. 
And in this case, we're going to use heat. So I'm going to use a matched cone. And on that matched cone is going to be um, some age plus. I am not um, a, a huge user of age plus anymore, but obviously with heat, um, you need to use that over biceramics because biceramics won't work. Um, I, I feel like in this case, I needed to use heat because uh, the canal space was quite wide. So here I'm just burning off the um, the remaining GP. If you don't have a heated plugger, I strongly suggest that you buy one. I think it's probably the first thing you buy if you're a young budding dentist. It just works really, really well. And now I'm using these Mach 2 pluggers just to really push down the GP. Again, I've said this on many, many, many times on my videos. Um, you know, I used to be really, really sort of um, scared of pushing down the GP. But if you are really, really sure of the apical diameter and you've got a nice stop, don't be scared to really, really push the GP down into the um, into the into the canal and make sure you get all of the GP and the, the seal it into the into the walls. So that's really, really important because that's where you get a nice seal and also you get a nice sort of picture on the uh, on the radiograph at the end. So I'm um, happy that I've pushed it nice and nice and firm. And now we're going to do some backfill with some um, warm gutter perker. Um, in, in this case, I'm using a B&L um, uh, unit, uh, the BT unit, and I'm going to backfill. Now, I'm not as great at warm vertical compaction than most people. So some people like to backfill it and to go all the way to the top. I, personally, what I like to do is I like to put a little bit in, pack it down, a little bit in, pack it down. Um, it obviously takes longer, but I just think for me it's more predictable. I don't make as many mistakes, like I don't get a lot of voids. Um, so, you know, you, you, you do you, but for me I just like to do it in small increments. And um, yeah, in, in this case I didn't really need um, a lot of um, increments. This case also is going to require um, internal whitening, but this is a referral. I won't be doing the internal whitening. So what I need to make sure is the uh, GP is well below the CEJ. And um, in this case, the referring dentist has asked me to fill with, with composite over uh, GIC. Um, you know, personally, I think GIC will, will be better down here, but um, you know, you kind of have to go off what the referring dentist has asked. Um, and I know the referring dentist very well. He's a very, very um, competent dentist. So I'm happy to fill it with um, the cap with, with composite over the top. Um, you know, I, I really, really do like working with, with heat. Um, I think if you, uh, again, if you're a budding endodontist, you, you, you've not used heat before, I think it'd be really worthwhile if you bought yourself a heated unit. M mainly because, um, you know, a lot of the times you, you're going to use a matched cone and it's going to be absolutely fine. But especially with central incisors, um, upper sixes, platal roots, you, the, or, or even um, distals or lower sixes, you're going to notice that the, the, the canal space is, is quite oval and quite wide and your matched cone plus um, the sealer just just isn't going to fill that uh, canal completely um, you know nice and like a mono block e even if you're using a bioceramic so I would say l have have the heat in your in your back pocket ready to take out when you require it but like I said I'm, I'm very much a, um, a bioceramic person at the moment so um, I will tend to use that more often than not um, again, that is not without its uh, issues and, and difficulties. So that, that that's a completely different um, uh, video to take. So as we can see here, you know, this is the um, this is the uh, uh, post op. You know, very very small void. You know, but I'm I'm actually really really happy with this. I'm happy with the um, with the with the apical third. It's nicely to length. And you'll notice here that I am preparing the tooth for an internal whitening. So I've obviously put the little uh, composite cap over the, um, over the GP and then I'm filling it with uh, PTFE and a little bit of GI over the top. And overall, very, very, very happy. Um, uh, patient was super happy. So these cases have 
a kind of a really really nice um, sort of uh, job well done factor so you know it's um, they're very very satisfying and um, and you know it's just it's just just nice to do nice and easy and um, yeah super super happy listen if you like these videos and um, you enjoy them I like making them please please like and subscribe subscribe is probably the most important thing and you know let me know in the comments section if you uh, feel like you have any uh, requests for videos you'd like to see and I'll see you soon okay bye bye